Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing not a piano, but another piano light. A few weeks back, or maybe a bit longer than that by now, I reviewed a piano light on this channel that was sent to me by a small company called New LED, or New Vending, I think was actually the parent company's name. But today, the company BenQ has sent me a piano light for review as well. So the only disclosure I have here is that BenQ offered to send me this light, but they did so with the full understanding that would bring you guys an honest review as always. They said if I like the light, I'm more than welcome to keep it, but if it turns out I don't like the light, I will either send it back or perhaps give it to a friend. However, I've heard lots of different things about BenQ throughout the years, and many of them have been, actually most of them have been positive. BenQ is a company that typically seems to focus on uh, technology. I think they have a division that's for making uh, computer keyboards and computer mice. They make computer monitors, which I've heard very good things about. They they also make different types of the desk lamps, and now they're branching out into the world of piano lamps. This one, I believe, is their first um, piano lamp, and it's actually a very high-end lamp indeed. When you look online, you'll often see different piano lamps that are advertised for upwards of $200. And from my knowledge, many of these are simply just high quality, build quality lamps that simply are lamps designed for piano. This one is a high quality, build quality lamp designed for piano that also has a number of cool tech features in it that I think many of those other lamps might not have. So let's open this up and check it out. I'm very excited because this, I think, is going to be really, really cool. In the description is going to be a link to BenQ's website about this product and also an Amazon link if you're interested in purchasing one of these for yourself. So let's open up this box and check out how it is packaged. And then once I unbox it, I will also, of course, test it out on various pieces of equipment we have here in the studio. Now, I said there was one disclaimer about the light, but there's also another one I wanted to put out for you, and you can probably see it down here in the bottom left corner for you. It says, designed for upright piano. Now, this is fantastic because most people will have an upright piano in their house because most people aren't crazy enough like me to want to have a full-size grand in their house. But this is an issue for us here at Milan Recording Studios because we don't actually have an upright piano here. So we will be testing it out on everything else that we possibly can. I will see if it works on a grand piano, and I think I'll be able to do that. But in case it doesn't work on a grand piano, I'll also try it out on a Hammond B3 and a Fender Rhodes and a Wurlitzer and anything else I can think of. So so, let's open this thing up, take this out, whoa, I'm going to put this back here, and this here is the box within a box. What's kind of interesting is that it's actually quite lopsided because this, it, this instrument, not, it's not an instrument, this light has a very heavy base. So that's why the handle is here because all of the weight is actually on this end. So to keep it balanced, the handle is offset. Very nice attention to detail there, makes it easier to handle. I believe the weight on this is like 11 pounds. It's a very hefty light. And so I think it's gonna be pretty cool to check out. Let's see, on the front of the box, does it have that on the back side too? Yeah, you can see here the light. It's a very slim um, shaped light and it has a number of different touch sensitive panels on the front here. It says here, hello, enjoy your piano light together. Is that what it says? Yeah, together, okay. So I'll be enjoying it together with you guys. Here we have a little quick start guide. Um, based on the information I saw on their website, it seems to be very easy to operate, so I'm not sure how much I will need that. This here is a little shade that you can clip onto the light to prevent light from bouncing into your eyes. It kind of helps direct it down, because if it's above you on an upright piano, it might be shining light into your eyes. So you can put this shade on it to keep that from happening, or at least to minimize that effect, and that also is a very nice attention to detail. That was something I found that the new LED light kind of tended to do, but it wasn't really a huge issue because it also made lighting the video pretty easy because the, the LED lamp helped light my face up a lot. It also wasn't incredibly bright, so it wasn't like super annoying. It was just kind of something it did. It didn't have that shade. So let me take out this whole thing here because it's kind of, if I can, it's kind of neat to see how it's packaged. Like I said, very, heavy towards the one side because it's got this huge base that is basically like a brick. I think that's everything in the box. So this here is the lamp. You can see the massive base that it has and then also the light itself is right here. So let me take this out. It has a very nice power cable here, which is has an odd connector on the end. So it must have 
Let's see here. What do we have in the way of power cable? It must be a really long cable. Either that. Okay. So what we have here, this is kind of an odd way to do the, uh, to do the power, but what we have here is the long power cable, and then this little brick will plug into here, and then plug into the wall. So that's kind of odd. I'm not sure why they did it that way. Maybe it was to save space in the packaging, um, or maybe there's an upgradable one of these that's even longer than this, but it seems like the power cable just straight out of the box is nice and long, which is nice as well. That was the other thing that the new LED didn't really have was a power cable. It was instead powered to USB, which was kind of an advantage because you could, you could use it with a power bank and use it on the go. So kind of a benefit and a drawback to that one. But this one here is only, whoops, it was only really able to be powered through the wall socket. But as you can see here, this light looks really cool, especially it will once I get the plastic off. These supports here are really high quality. They're like solid metal, and this base here is really heavy. So you won't have any issues at all with this light toppling over, falling over, and it, I don't think it would be very difficult for like your cat to push it off the piano. So there is the base all unpackaged, very nice and sleek and modern looking. Now let's get the uh, top part here off. How does this work? Very nice swivel. Oh, that, that has a really nice feel to it, that swivel ball joint there. That's cool. Let's see how this comes off. I think it's just wrapped around. Yeah, there we go. And there's tape stuck to it. There we go, there's that gone. Now we just have the plastic that's on these little supports and that I think should be cut perhaps, maybe. See if I can, there we go. Oh. There's that one and let's do this one. There we go. So that is the BenQ Piano Light all unwrapped. And as you can see, it looks really cool. So this here can swivel forwards all the way out like this. And then this can also swivel out, has a massive range of control. And that looks really cool. It has a really nice feel to it. Very, very quality build construction. And I think I'm already putting fingerprints on the front panel. This front panel is actually touch sensitive and there's a number of different features you can do here. You can adjust the color temperature. You can adjust the brightness. It has an auto turn on feature. So when you walk up to the instrument, it will actually light up automatically because it'll sense you coming. There's an infrared sensor somewhere up in here. So it has a lot of cool features. And when you make a adjustment to the color temperature, I think if you tap and hold the little heart-shaped button over here, it will create a favorites. And then if you want to return to that setting, you can just tap the heart button and it will return to that original setting. So that's kind of cool. Let's plug it in real quick and just see very quickly how it works. And then I will go put it onto some sort of instrument. I think the first thing I will try to do is get it to work on a grand piano, which should work. What I'm going to try is having the lid closed and then leaning this over and seeing if I can get that to go over the music desk, but it might not be tall enough. But we will try it out and see what we can do. So let me plug this in and I'll come right back to you and we'll see how this works. So the operation of the BenQ piano light is quite simple. And of course, after this clip, I will try putting it on different instruments to really see how it works and to put it to the test. But to turn it on and off, you can tap the yellow button in the middle and that will turn on the light. As you can see, there is a button here that can adjust the brightness. So if I tap this, it should get brighter. And if I tap this, it should get dimmer. It might have already been on the brightest setting. So you can manually adjust the brightness of the light, which is a very nice touch. You can also adjust the color temperature of the light too and make it nice and warm or make it nice and cool white. And you can also have a mixture of the two as well, which is pretty sweet. There is a automatic, uh, I think it's called presence detection, where you can turn this on and after a certain time, the light will turn off automatically. And then as you walk in towards the light, it will come back on and automatically detect you with an infrared sensor, which is a very cool touch. There's also an automatic uh, dimming feature as well, which apparently will adjust the light to the ambient um, 
room so it's not going to be ridiculously bright or ridiculously dim. This seems to possibly have a bit of a uh, little lag between it because when I put my hand over it, it takes a moment to adjust to the room, but it does work definitely, which is a nice touch. So you don't have to manually keep adjusting the light as the day progresses and it becomes brighter or darker. It will do that automatically, which is wonderful. And then also there is a favorites button. So what you can do here is as you've tweaked the settings and you found a color temperature and brightness that you really like, if you tap and hold the favorites button for three seconds, it will remember that setting. Then if you make changes to the light again and you want to return to that previous setting, you can tap the favorites button and it will return to that original setting. Now let's go check out the piano lamp on various different instruments and see how well it works. So here we have the BenQ piano light sitting on my 1965 Hammond B3. Of course, it's not a piano, but the piano light still does a really great job of lighting up both the music desk for the organ and both of the manuals as well. So it has a really, really wide spread, which is something that BenQ says on their website and definitely seems to be really true, is it has a very wide spread of light. The light down here on the bottom manual is a little bit dimmer than the light on the second manual, but you can still definitely see all the keys and it wouldn't be any kind of an issue at all to play. And of course, it's really easy to adjust this light on the fly. So if you were in the middle of a performance and you wanted to get more light down here, just tilt it up a bit. And now we have even light on both of the keys, but the light on the um, music desk is a little bit dimmer than it was before. But if there was sheet music here, I probably should have put sheet music up there, huh? If there was sheet music up there, it would be still very easy, at least for me to see. So the great thing about this, one of the great things about it is that it's really easy to adjust the light in the middle of anything you're doing because you don't have to worry about the rest of the light falling over or flopping over. It's very, very solid and secure. That base is really, really heavy, so it's not going to get knocked over by just about anything unless someone deliberately pushes it over, which even still would be pretty hard to do. So it's really easy to move the light in any direction you want it to, and you don't have to worry about the base of the light shifting, rotating, falling over. Very easy to move and really, really great. Just to show you the color temperature difference, it'll change the way I look, I think, but I can increase it to make it look really warm and bring out the rich tones of the B3, but I might look kind of blue for some reason now, but I can also put it back to where I had it before. Speaking of that base, if I fold this over, you can see right there that the base is massive, heavy, and solid, and that's why it's really easy to adjust the top part of the light. So, so far, I'm very impressed with the BenQ piano light, and so far I haven't needed to put that little shield on for the, um, for the, to prevent glare. If I tilt it up like this, I sort of would need it, but it's not really bright. It's just I can see the little uh, lights there. So as I continue to use it, if I need to put that shield on, I will. But so far, I haven't even needed it. But it was a really great thing that BenQ included that little shield in there. They said in the quick guide menu uh, manuscript, little quick guide paper, that if you're using this piano lamp with children, they might need that because, of course, they would be shorter. And an upright piano with light is taller, they probably would experience some bright glare. Let's try it out on another instrument and see how it works. It works amazing for this B3. So now we have the BenQ piano light sitting on my 1973 Fender Rhodes, and it's actually working out very, very well. As you can see here, the light is perfectly lighting up the keys. If I twist it here, you can see that if I tilt it back, it lights up the top, and if I tilt it more towards me, the keys start to get very dim. So at this particular distance, it has a bit of a narrower kind of field of light. It still obviously has a wide spread. It's lighting up all the way back here and all the way over here, but it's a little more focused than it was for the Hammond B3. So as a result, it lights up the keys very, very well. So if you were using a Fender Rhodes on location, you could plug in a light like this and be able to see what you were doing, no matter what the brightness of the surrounding stage was like, which might be kind of cool. The Fender Rhodes doesn't really have a music desk per se. There is a very shallow slot here that you can use to fit a single stiff book or something like that, very thin. Um, but it, this light does a really great job of lighting up the keys, which also is important. And it's also something that BenQ mentions on their site, that when you have it on an upright piano, it not only lights the sheet music, but also the keys. One thing I wanted to talk about, though, was also the design of the base here for the light. The top of the Fender Rhodes is curved. It has a bit of an arch to it. And this light has no real issues at all with that curve. Part of the reason for that is because the design of the bottom of the light is designed to work with upright pianos. 
upright pianos have generally a hinge that runs in the middle of the lid. So if you were to set this light on top of it, there's a groove in the bottom that will accommodate that hinge and not make the light wobble and be crazy. That gap, I think, that groove is also helping it be more stable on the Fender Rhodes. I think if the bottom of this light was flat, it would be very wobbly and I'd need to put something under it to compensate, which would work just fine. But because the light has that large ga uh, groove underneath of it, I think it's a lot more stable here on the Fender Rhodes than it would otherwise be. So it's a success with the Fender Rhodes too. Let's go see if there's another strange odd instrument that I can try it out on. So now I'm here in Studio B with my practice piano, which is a Schiedmeier. And as you can tell, it is a grand piano. And as you can tell, I've managed to make the piano light to work for the grand piano. Now, I'm not disappointed at all that it doesn't really work very well with grand pianos because it literally says on the box, designed for upright pianos. So I'm not saying this is a negative thing for the BenQ piano light, that it doesn't work amazing with grand pianos. But I do want to say that I don't think it would be difficult for BenQ to make it work well with grand pianos. I think that all that might need to be done is to extend this arm out by maybe three or four inches. And it, the base is so heavy and sturdy that that still should provide plenty of stability. And if you extend that arm out, you'll be able to make it go taller and also reach farther over the music desk so that I won't have to stack books behind the music desk to raise the lamp to the proper height. I have three novels behind here, each of which are about this thick. And each of those are helping to keep the piano light up higher and project it a little bit forwards than it normally would sit. This helps it cast excellent light over the fallboard, I mean the music desk of the piano. However, the lip of the fallboard is getting in the way and it's not able to light up the keys very well on this grand piano. So again, I'm not saying that this is a negative aspect of this light, but I did want to point out that you can make it work to light up the music desk of a grand piano. And I'll probably leave it here for a while because I use this piano on a near daily basis and it might be kind of cool to need to use this lamp from time to time. Although honestly, here I have pretty good light, so typically I don't need a piano lamp. So that is how it works on a grand piano, and I thought that I would show you guys that because it can be made to work with a grand piano. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. It's a absolutely fantastic piano light, and while it does have this one limitation of not working phenomenally with a grand piano, it works absolutely amazing with everything else I've tried it on, the Hammond B3, the Fender Rhodes, and I certainly would have tried it on an upright piano if I had one here, and I think it would have worked amazing for that. BenQ has put an absolute massive amount of time researching all the things that you would need in a piano lamp, and then some. The attention to detail is absolutely amazing, and one thing that just dawned on me is the reason the power connector on the end was so strange is because you can actually swap that out for a different power plug if you're in a different country because the power plugs in Europe and in Asia are different than the ones that we have here in the States. So if you were traveling abroad with this lamp, you could simply switch it out and it's very easy for BenQ to simply you outsource different plugs that will accommodate their lamp rather than design 20 different lamps with 20 different power plugs. That is also a very nice touch as well. The features of this lamp are really great. The fact that you can change the color temperature so easily, change the brightness so easily. The auto brightness feature is very nice as well. And the, um, the sensor mode is very cool too. I actually haven't really tried out the, um, the automatic turning on and off system as you walk in towards the, the light. But based on how great everything else works with this light, I'm thinking it's gonna do great. I'll try it out in the next few days and if, I, if it doesn't work well, I'll make a comment here in the video about how it works. The favorite setting is also really great too, so you can tap that and simply go back to your favorite setting. It's really easy to change that favorite setting and overall, I absolutely love this light. Thank you very much, BenQ, for sending, sending me this light. It's another amazing addition to the awesome group of things that I have here at the studio. I've got cool musical instruments and now cool musical equipment here to like this light. So thank you very much, Ben Q, for sending me this. I'm really, really enjoying it so far, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video too. Um, if you want, I can put the information for this lamp down in the description. So if you want, you can go check that out. There'll be a link, once again, to BenQ's website and an Amazon link for where you can purchase this. At the moment of filming it, it says they're actually out of stock, but hopefully that will change in the future. So if you guys go check it out, you can purchase one yourself. It is on the pricier side of music lamps, but I think it's well worth the money. It's The build quality is phenomenal, and the features that it has are absolutely incredible too. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If 
you did, you also might want to go check out the rest of my videos if you're new here. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, digital pianos, and all kinds of other neat stuff too. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to go check it out. And if you want to subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.